camera for 3D spatial relationship interpretation. Thank you. Okay, so good morning everyone. I'm Jun Yi from UCF. Today I'm very glad to share my work with you. So the title is Exploring in Depth Camera for 3, 3D Spatial Relationship Interpretation. So my talk will um, be like this five different parts. And I will first briefly introduce the motivation, definition, and background stuff. And then I will go through each of the technical details of the three module. That is the 3D direct directional relationship definition, 3D sync reconstruction, and the algorithm for computing those relationships. And, and finally, I will go to the performance study. So first, um, what is the spatial relationship? So Spatial relationships specifies how an object is located with respect to the other object. Those, um, there are, um, what, why do we need this? There are many different application scenarios for the spatial relationship. For example, the robotic. The robotic, um, for example, the, the robot navigation, the road planning, and there are an other applications such as spatial reasoning in the AI and seeing understanding in the, com com in the computer vision and also the video surveillance like the spatial query. So the spatial relationship can be roughly um, categorized into two groups. One is the topological relationships. These um, have se um, several, several different instances such as coincide, um, touch externally, touch internally, contain inside, outside, disjoint, and etc. The other category is um, metric relationship, and this category can be further um, divided in, into two subgroups: uh, at or the other sub. The other subgroup is directional relationship. Perhaps. Oh, okay. Hello. Um. um Perhaps we are more um, familiar with the, the directional relationships, such as the eight geographic directions, north, east, west, south, south, east, something like that. So now let's take a look at these two images. So in the left image, there is a man sitting on a chair. On the right, there is a woman standing in front of the chair. So from the perspective of, of, a, two, or an, of a 2D image, it is difficult for the traditional 2D spatial, rela and spatial representation to distinguish these two different scenarios. Be because um, for a 2D spatial, both the two objects, uh, an object, that is the, the person and the child, they are overlapped to each other. So there is ambiguity. They cannot tell w whether these two objects are contact or not. So to resolve this ambiguity, um, we need to extend the 2D spatial logic to 3D spatial logic. So our solution is when we, uh, we use Kinect, we use Kinect, so um, the Kinect can provide us with the depth information. So it seems it do doesn't work. Oh, okay, I just speak louder. Okay, the, um, we have Kinect, the, the, the Kinect can provide the, R, the RGB image and depth image. We um, define a new set of 3D directional relationships and we just um, develop a new method. Uh, we develop algorithm to computing those relationships um, on base of the, we try to leverage the 3D object model. So I'd like to talk a little bit more about the specific application background in our system. So in, in, in this paper, we investigate the 3D spatial logic um, as a component in our live video database management system. This is LVDBMS for short. So what is LVDBMS? It, um, it, um, it is a general purpose framework for managing and processing video data for surveillance and analytically purposes. So this system allows automatic monitoring and management of a net or of a network of IP live cameras. So the user can specify uh, some specific task by, form by formulating a query to describe a spatial temporal event. 
This query is in the form of combination of some temporal large and um, temporal operator, logic operator, and spatial operator. So, when the specified event occurs and action associated with the query is triggered, so in a word, the live video database management system treats a camera as a special class of storage and process the query against the live video feed as a new category of database. So and this, um, this will allow the people to quickly develop some computer vision programs on top of the live video DBMS, very similar to the way that software engineers, they develop programs on top of the traditional database management system. So this is a very specific background. So next, let's move to the definition of 3D directional relationships. So first, let's look at the traditional 2D directions. There, there are roughly, def um, the 2D spatial direction is defined in a plane. So they have eight different directions. So in order to extend to 3D, we just um, simply in introduce another two major directions that is above and below. So by um, incorporating the, the combination of the two kinds of um, directions, we have 26 primitive 3D directions as defined in this three by three cube. Let, now let's take a close look at them. So <coughs> there are 27 degrees in the three by three cube. So suppose the reference point is in the center grid. It's surrounded by another 26 grids. So we can see that um, the 26 3D spatial um, directions can be presented in the following way. We see that um, on the middle layer of the cube, the original eight 2D directions are preserved. And also the, um, the above and the below directions are preserved. And on the corner grid and sometimes the side grid, uh, they are the newly combined uh, 3D directions. For example, the ASW, that is above and southwest, and BSE, that means below and southeast. So the 26 3D directions can be nicely fitted into this 3 by 3 cube. So now let's move to the 3D scene reconstruction. So we use the Kinect. In the RGB image, it's three channel, 24 bits. It has IJ, that is the index of the pixel and RGB, and also with the same pixel, we have, their, we have its depth value, that is um, Z. Yeah. By incorporating the calibration matrix that is in, um, um, from the calibration, we can just have a 3D point cloud uh, that is uh, from the camera coordinate system. We can further convert this um, 3D point cloud to the world coordinate system by um, by this by 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 finding the the camera pose. So we use the Renzac algorithm to estimate all the floor plane in the image. So after we have the floor plane, we can compute the normal of the floor plane, and this normal will give us the camera pose that that um, that, um, that is actually the two angles of the camera, and then we can just rotate the 3D point cloud according to the angles. And finally, the 3D point cloud is converted to the world coordinate system and aligned perfectly to the floor plane in the real world. So after we have obtained the point cloud model, we need to specify which one is the reference and which one is the target. This is um, specified by the user. So there are two kinds of object, that is stationary object and also mobile object. For stationary object, we can extract them by segmentation method. So this is specified by the user manually. So for the, when we use main shift, main shift segmentation. So for, for the background pixels, we need to remove them. That, the, uh, and we segment them on base of the RGB image because the background, they more or less have the same RGB value, same color, same luminance. And they have very different distant range. So we use the segmentation on the RGB image. But for 
the foreground object that is the person the the object they have they can have different color um, but they are almost in the very similar close range so we segment them both on the depth image only so for the mobile object is automatically detected and tracked using connect api so um after we have extract all those objects and then there will be a problem because we use only single connect. This single connect can only give us half of the information. The 3D point cloud model is incomplete. We have no idea what's going to be look like from the back side of this object. So we need to have a complete point cloud model to address the sp spatial relationship because the thickness of the object may be misrepresented because of this issue. And this will probably result to some incorrect spatial result. For example, side by side can be misly um, represented by the behind. So what we do is we simply use uh, some heuristics. That is the Manhattan suggestion. For, um, as the name suggests, in, Ma in Manhattan Island, all the buildings are just vertical to the ground. So we basically do a assumption that the, the, the depth value at the back side pixel have the same value as the pixel above it. So it's just like a vertical projection from the top view. So, okay, so after the reconstruction, we came to the, or the algorithm to compute the spatial relationship between two objects. So this, an, our idea came from the ray tracing technology. The ray tracing is a computer graphics technology basically used for rendering images in real time. So here we do not trace the ray, we just adopt the idea of the ray. So we, we, we just, um, or we generate 840 rays from the reference point into the world, into the Seville. That, 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 um, each ray will represent a particular direction that uh, rep uh, represented by the phi and the, the, the theta and the phi and the polar coordinate system. The, the theta is the angle between the ray and the negative y axis. And phi is the angle between the projection of the ray onto the x, o, z plane uh, and, the, and the, the, the positive x axis. So theta is range from 0 to pi. Phi is range from 0 to 2 pi, 2 times pi. Ideally, we want to have a lot of rains to sample the entire sphere. And this will give us a very precise results. But uh, this is absolutely very computational um, intense. So we quantize the theta and phi into different intervals with the step of pi divided by 20. So each ray will go into the sphere. And if it hits the object or part of the object, it will return 1. If it does not, it will return zero. So in this way, an 840 dimensional book, um, facial vector is, ob is obtained. So the advantage is that um, we sample the entire space. So it aut automatically take care of the position and also the complex structural information of the target object. So it can handle object with very complex shape and structure. And we have uh, so we need to now we need now to convert the 840 dimensional feature vector to the 26 primitive direction. So how do we do that? We just um, cluster the neighboring rays into different groups. So we cluster and the, the neighboring theta and the phi into different subgroups, and each group have five, five consecutive values of theta and the phi, respectively. So in other words, each primitive direction will be covered by 25 rays. So it seems that the, the five by five ray window have different significance. For example, the ray right in the middle can be weighted more against the ray at the edge. So we further weighted these 25 rays by a 5 by 5 Gaussian filter, and we normalized them by the total. So in this way, we, so in, in this way, the 
840 dimensional bool feature vector is converted to the 26 dimensional float feature vector. So now we know how to compute the direction between a point and the target object. So how do we com um, compute, how, how do we select a point? Because the reference object is a point cloud of multiple points. We cannot use every point. So we, we need to have a way to find where is the best place to, or to generate a race. So we use the octree coding. The octree coding is just like the binary tree or the quad tree. The only difference is the octree has uh, every node has eight child nodes. So it can recursively subdivide a cube into eight um, subcubicles. And n levels of octree decomposition partitions the space into eight to the power of n subcubicles. So what we do is we start from the bounding box of the reference object, and we perform the octree decomposition to the bounding box. And we can keep doing that until the granularity of the octree is good enough. We can see from the illustration below that the, um, this is the chair, and this is the octree model. We can see that the octree model is um, perfectly represent the structural information of the chair as compared to the point cloud, but it has only like maybe several hundred octree subcubicles. This, this is just simpler than using every pixel in the point cloud. So after the octree, so um, now we compute the direction between two objects. So there are two strategies. One is central-based method. The other is landmark-based method. As the name suggests, the, cen the centroid-based method is we just use a centroid, only one pixel, the centroid from the point cloud of the reference object, and generate those rays into the sphere. And we check if each ray intersects with the target object or not. We compute the 26-dimensional float features, and we sort them in the descending order and output all those values that is greater than zero. And it's simple, fast, useful when, especially when the target is significantly larger than the reference object. <coughs> so on the other hand, we have a landmark-based method. So we use the two levels of octree decomposition, and we perform the same thing of the central-based method to every subcubicle of the octree model, and then we stack over all the results together to find, to, to generate the accumulated result. So since the ray take care of the, take care of the target object with a very complex shape, and the landmark can take care of the reference object with a complex shape, so the landmark based method can just come very robust to spatial relationship between complex objects. But nevertheless, it's very uh, heavy on computation. So let's go to the performance study. So we investigate the performance of our algorithm in two different ways. The first one is a real, is, is a real indoor environment. This is more like a demonstration. So we are using our uh, the scene in our lab, and the uh, Kinect is mounted on the high spot facing down to the floor. The resolution is the VGA. The other is a quantitatively evaluation of the performance. So we use a public available database and the RGBD database. This is the database from Washington University, and it contains 300 common household objects, like the bowls, dishes, and it's all those all objects are captured from eight different scenes. And the resolution is also VGA. So, so this is a demonstration. So in these four images, we have um, investigated re uh, directions between the chair and also the, the, the box. Let's take an example um, of the image B. We can see that um, w um, the reference object is the box and the target is the chair. We can see that the result is BSE and SE. And the SE is um, larger than the BSE. It's, it's quite intuitive because we see that the box is a little bit higher than the chair, and the chair is roughly located to the southeast direction 
of the box, but more sin and the sources is more salient than above uh, and then below sources. So the result perfectly reflects human intuitive. If we reverse the reference and target, we can get very correspondent result. That is, BSE will become ANW, and SE will become NW. So that's correspondent. So this demonstration just give you an intuitive idea that how our algorithm can perform and can produce a result that's quite suits human perception. So um, the other is a exam an experiment on the database. So this is a quantitative evaluation. Since all the images are captured from the videos, they are very consecutive, very similar to each other. We just select 43 representative images from all the image sets. So this is some example of the images and all those items inside the image. So there, um, unfortunately, the biggest challenge is, is that there is no ground truth for this kind of problem because this, this problem is, is, is very special. So we have to annotate the ground truth by ourselves. So we just find 214 pairs of objects and we label from them and uh, from the 43 images. And there is a total of 340 and, 40 and 64 spatial relationship between them. So we know that there could be multiple result from a pair of objects because their relationship can be more than one. So among them, we have major spatial relationship. There is the most, um, most suited human intuitive because when a human sees two objects, he um, first came to his mind is what's the major, uh, the major direction between these two objects. So we have to manually annotate the major direction between these two objects intuitively. And also we need to find all the possible candidate relationships. And this will be used to evaluate the performance of the system to finding all possible relationships. I'm sorry. So regarding the major relationship, this is the experimental result. Both the landmark-based method and the central-based method are run. So we can see that um, nearly 90% 90, 90 of the object can be correctly detected and, and regarding to the major relationship. So this number is quite good. And that means um, which re reflects the performance of our algorithm. This is quite suited to human intuitive. And we further perform evaluation based on all candidate relationships. We adopt two metrics that is recall and precision. This is quite, these two metrics are quite common in pattern recognition community. So the, we can see that the landmark based method can outperform the centroid based method by the recall. It, uh, the recall had improved um, almost 10% as compared to the central based method. But only uh, the precision is only dropped a little bit. So our conclusion is that uh, the landmark based method can significantly increase the recall without sacrificing too much precision. And then we take a look at the speed. Okay, so we measure the elapsed time of processing all those um, procedures. These do not include the segmentation time. So we can see that the, the, the central based method takes only like uh, 41 milliseconds, but the landmark based method takes like a, a lot more than the centralized, than the central based method. But this will not be a big issue because we can leverage some GPU techniques to leverage the parallel and speed up. So let's make a conclusion. In this work, we define a new set of 3D directional spatial relationships. We introduce an efficient algorithm to compute those directions, and we perform extensive ex experiment study based on both a real scene and a public database. And the result has demonstrated the effectiveness of our algorithm. 
So f uh, finally, we have some discussion. So one is the, uh, we use the polar coordinate system. This will bring a problem that the density of, of the rain is not equal among the surface of the sphere. And places at two poles will have more rain than places on the other places. So to address this issue, we can use geodesic sphere, which can equally subdivide this surface of this sphere in, uh, into triangles of the same area. So the other um, possibility is we use GPU implementation. For example, the OpenCL or CUDA is fully parallel. Each kernel of the open CL can take care of one octree subcubicle. So every subcubicle is now processed in parallel, fully parallel, very quick. And there may be other ways to um, fill up the incomplete point cloud model. For example, we can use multiple connect, and we can also use only one connect, but make it moving. The, um, this is the technique from the connect fusion of the SIGGRAPH 20, uh, 2011. We can also come up with some better heuristics. And finally, we can push the octree ahead. As we have seen, the octree model has um, preserved very pretty, very good uh, structural in information as compared to the point cloud. So why not just use the octree model to replace the such a complex point cloud? And if we use the if, if we, we push the octree ahead, we can just represent the 3D model by octree instead of the point cloud. We can do the segmentation on octree, and we can just com compute the spatial relationship on octree. This will be much more efficient, maybe. So I finished the talk. Okay. So is there any questions? Hi. Um, there's something I did not understand. <coughs> Once you have reconstructed a scene, why can't you just rotate the scene and see when an object is occluded by the another object and you'll have the vector? This okay. So, um, so the direction between two objects in the scene is um, based on the world coordinate system not the camera coordinate system. When we reconstruct the point cloud model, so what we have, uh, what we generate is a model, is a reconstructed model based on the camera coordinate system. So it, it, it is not the world coordinate system. Since the camera has some pose and orientation, it's facing down to the floor, so these two objects are, and these two mo models are not aligned to the world <coughs> coordinate system. So we need to find a way to convert the um, objects, um, many different objects. We, we just convert them all to the world coordinate system. So that will make the problem easier. So am I answering your question? I understand the need to go from the camera coordinate system to the world coordinate system. Yes. When you ha when you you have a representation of all points in the wor world coordinate system, mm -hmm. then you can manipulate that scene. Yeah, and you could see when an, a a pixel from object A is hidden by a pixel from object B mm -hmm. by trying different angles of rotation, mm -hmm. and then once you know that it's occluded, you you have the, your directional vector between object A and B. I, I don't understand why you're you're sending all the rays from all the centroids of all the uh, I think um, the motivation behind this is that um, we also want to investigate the scenario that we have only one reference object, but multiple different target objects all over the place. So if you want to um, compute the result just in one run, we just send all the ray all over. And this will simplify the computation. OK. Any other questions? Yes. 
Sorry, it might be a, a silly question, but is there a minimum, a maximum elevation on the Connect where your system works best? Or uh, yeah, the, as a matter of fact, the the specs of Connect is quite limited. The Connect is only a tool for gaming, for like the the, the natural user interface for gaming. It's not specifically designed for this kind of research problem. So. For now, this is quite a limitation. We can only, so as you see in the demonstration, we can only, only leverage a, a, a very limited range of space. But this is, this is not the limitation of the algorithm. It's only the device. Maybe sometime in the future, the Kinect will improve, and we can just have more space. 